We are going to take you on an epic train ride through the Alps from Zermatt down south to Locarno, riding on four different trains during this day's journey to get you there. We've enjoyed our visit to Zermatt, but it's time for some new adventures. We've been staying at the Hotel Butterfly. It's right in the heart of Zermatt. Most of the rooms have balconies. You can sit out there and enjoy the view. The Butterfly is located just a few blocks away from the main street, so it's very quiet up here and they serve a wonderful breakfast. It's all of your typical eggs and meats and fruits and breads and coffee and juice that you find in a good European hotel. This hotel score is very highly on TripAdvisor where 93% of the reviews are either excellent or very good. And the Butterfly is one of the most conveniently located hotels in town because it's only about two blocks from the train station three or four minutes and you can easily walk down there and plus they'll help you with your baggage they can shuttle it down in their little electric cart so you don't have to drag your bag at all so it's very easy to make your preparations which is what we're doing now it's time to leave Zermatt it's really quite easy to load the suitcases onto the train we help each other out we have plenty of time and there's lots of room on board the train it travels in the same car that we're sitting in and a little baggage area at the end. A final glimpse of the main pedestrian lane of town, lined with shops and restaurants and little hotels. What a beautiful village this is. We really enjoyed our stay here in Zermatt. We've been here for three days and seen a lot. Hope you've checked our other episodes on our visit to Zermatt, going up all of those different mountains and doing some hiking, riding the rack rails. Now it's time to move along. We'll be enjoying another glorious train ride through beautiful mountains and valleys along a river, heading down to the town of Visp. This first leg is actually part of the world famous Glacier Express, one of the premier sightseeing rail lines of the world. And then we'll be changing trains and going south, heading through the Alps and coming out the other side into what's called the Ticino. That's the southern part of Switzerland with the Italian language and cuisine and that Italian influence, but it's thoroughly Swiss. We'll be heading down to Locarno and visiting Lugano in some future episodes, but for now we're just enjoying this beautiful train ride. Here and there you'll notice landslides and signs of past avalanches showing you how raw these mountains are. They are still growing and being formed. And we'll be spotting some animals along the way. There'll be cows and sheep and horses and goats out in the yards and pastures, all part of the scenery. Now and then you'll get classic views of the waterfalls spilling down the mountains. The Swiss take advantage of many of the mountain streams to generate electricity through hydropower. For train tickets, you can buy point to point if you wish, but if you're in the country for any length of time, you should consider getting the Swiss Pass or the Swiss Flexi Pass. The Swiss Pass is good every day for a set period, maybe four days minimum, up to a month maximum, and priced accordingly. So you can use it anytime you want during that time period. Or if you get the Flexi Pass, it's good for a certain number of days within a month. So if you're just going to be traveling, let's say, four days during a three week period, you're better off getting the Swiss Flexi Pass. It'd be a little bit less expensive than buying a pass for the whole three weeks. You'll notice this valley is rather sparsely populated, but it's lovely to come across the little hamlets with their chalet style homes and slate tile roofs and wooden construction. It's nice that the windows slide down on many of these little Swiss trains, even in first class especially when you have that opportunity, go ahead, slide the window down, stick your head out, be careful it doesn't get lopped off by a pole, but now nah, you'll be quite safe. And that's how you get some of these really spectacular views of the rivers curving around and the mountain valleys and peaks beyond. Occasionally a train will have some cars with windows that open and other cars where the windows do not open, typically in first class. And if you're in one of those cars where the window doesn't open and you really want to stick your head out and get a view and take a picture, well, just get up and move. Move to a different car and take a different seat. There's usually 
enough available space on the train, there you had that flexibility. If you are taking pictures through a closed window, watch out for the reflection that can ruin a shot. So just get the right camera angle and you should be fine. Hillsides covered with grapes. This is for the limited wine production of Switzerland. They do make red wine and white wine and it's usually quite good, but not much of it is ever exported. About 95% is consumed in country. You'll be spotting other kinds of economic activity as the train rolls along, passing a major rock quarry. All these hard rocks of the mountains, uh, some of them are put to good use for building materials. So you will see quarries, you'll see lumber yards. There's certainly some selective trimming of the trees and lumbering going on in Switzerland. Power station for that electrical generation. Keep your eyes open and you'll spot some beautiful bridges with all of the deep valleys and high mountains and rail lines and roads. Switzerland has lots of bridges, some of them old stone. Our train made a brief stop in the town of Visp and there was some kind of celebration going on. Not quite sure, costume soldiers and then a priest with a religious canopy, so maybe it was some kind of a holy day. Local saint, perhaps. But we don't have time to get off the train. It's only about a five minute stop and we are continuing on to the terminus of this line, the next town down at Brig. The train we've been riding on is a narrow gauge private train line, just 43 kilometers in length between Zermatt and Brig, where we get off the train and we take our suitcases with us as usual. So most of the uh, big train lines in Switzerland are owned by the national government, but there are a number of these smaller private lines and we find we're in the middle of the street. We have to unload our baggage and then we walk across the main street into the major train station to get on the international train that'll take us down south below the Alps. The station at Brig is quite large because this is an international train junction. Several rail lines intersect here. Our destination is the Swiss city of Locarno, but to get there, we have to go through Italy. We're heading south in Switzerland, through the Alps, through the Simplon Tunnel. It's quite a rail route. The tunnel was first opened in 1905. And on the south side of the Alps, we'll be arriving in the Italian city of Domodossola. And there we get off this train and get on another train to continue our journey. Reluctantly say goodbye to our big comfortable train and notice all these tracks and switches here at Domodossola. Most trucks get loaded on trains to go through Switzerland. They don't like the diesel pollution, so they put them on trains. This time we have a small challenge on the transfer. Okay, let's go, get your bag. We have to walk down the stairs. We don't have a lot of time and we're gonna have to deal with That's some staircases. So we get the bags off, we help each other out, walk through a tunnel, up on another platform, walk along, roll our bags, down another staircase. And we're not quite there yet. We keep going and through another tunnel and we make it to the train on time right there. as Is there the first conductor class? points us to the proper car. Domodossola, where we just changed, is in Italy, and that's an example of the difference between the Swiss rail provisions and some Italian rail stations in the smaller areas. Well, now we're happy to be settled in and enjoying our scenic ride already, crossing the big rivers, and conductor comes along. We'll be enjoying a lot of views out the train windows because this is the Cento Valley Line, which means a hundred valleys are in the region that the train is traveling through. No dining car on this simple train, but a very friendly gal running the snack cart. We have coffee, beer, wine, red and white. We have Coca-Cola, lemon, orange soda. How's your coffee? Good. Espresso, Italian, yes. What kind of money do they take? Anything you got. <laughs> We're in the middle of a fairly long day on all these trains and never did get a chance to sit down for a real lunch, so a little snack will get us through. It's about a two hour train ride to get from Domodossola over to our end destination, 
of Locarno. We do manage to spot some hill towns in the distance. With all these valleys, the area is noted for the little villages on the hills. And we see quite a few rivers passing under our viaducts, beautiful houses, and some narrow gorges. So we thought we were doing pretty good here, getting comfortable in the train and shooting pictures out the window. And then we slow down. There are a number of stations along this little line. There's 22 stations. It doesn't oh, stop oh, everywhere, yes. but oh, we came to a halt. And we were told to change trains. So we had to get off of one train. And fortunately, the other train was right there at the same small platform. So it was really the easiest possible transfer. But for some reason, our train was stopping, even though it was supposed to go all the way. And we got on the other train that will indeed take us off to Locarno. This train route is 52 kilometers long, of which about 65% is in Italy. And yes, you can tell we're still in Italy from the station names and from some graffiti. The scenery was wonderful all the way. Even on a day like this, which is fairly cloudy, it was not raining out there, so our view was not obliterated. On a sunny day, it would probably be nicer, but on a light cloudy day like this, it's very pleasant. As you can see, we have now arrived. We have arrived in Locarno. And there's a escalator to take us up. Welcome back to Switzerland. And then we're gonna find it's a very short walk to get to our hotel, which is only two blocks away from the train station. So that is really convenient. Great location yeah. right on the waterfront. Yep, right there. Facing Lake Maggiore. Yeah. Hotel Garni Geranio is gonna be our home for the next two days and a good base for exploring the Ticino, the southern part of Switzerland. In upcoming episodes, we'll take you out on Lake Maggiore on a boat ride going from Ascona back to Locarno. And we're gonna go down to the city of Lugano, a beautiful lakeside town on Lake Lugano, and take a boat ride over to the village of Gandria, all coming up. Now that we're in the Italian-speaking part of Switzerland, the Ticino, we want to go out for an Italian dinner. And they have got a nice range of Italian restaurants right here in Locarno. The southern part of Switzerland is the best of both worlds. It's got the romance of Italy and the efficiency of Switzerland. What a combination. They speak Italian. The cuisine is largely Italian. They enjoy Italian-style wines as well. Gelato is available widely. I hope you like arugula. And yet, they are all Swiss and proud of it. This restaurant called Divino was very convenient for us, right next to our hotel. And we enjoyed this outdoor seating, kind of a sheltered area, but outdoors, beautiful weather, and great food. We had a variety. There was some risotto and pasta. There was, of course, some pizza soups and salads, all kinds of things on a big menu at Divino. We have a lot more shows about Switzerland and all of Europe on our YouTube channel and website. Check it out.